what is happening with the banks at the moment and how are they actually assessing and looking at cost of living? Like, is it a blanket rule, like you said, how many kids a family has or is it, how are they looking at cost of living and is it different for everybody in all different banks? It's a two-way street. So they'll still have ratios they'll look at in regards to, let's say, a single applicant or a couple with a couple of kids. Uh, so they'll, they'll have ratios they look at, but it's also suburb-based, uh, you know, so it's demographic comes into that as well. So it might be a lower cost base if you're leaving regional compared to Melbourne metropolitan. But then they'll also look at what your actual spending is over the last three months as well, going through your statements. Now, not all lenders will do that. There are some lenders that don't require uh, the three-month statements, but there's a lot of lenders that will have a look at that and just make sure it's in alignment with those ratios to do the due diligence as well. So, but yeah, it's it's been a moving target over the last three months as inflation's gone up. So we have to keep constantly keep our eye on that and work out which lenders are actually more favourable in some circumstances to others, depending on the individual situation as well. So, so again, what the one great thing about the industry we're in with uh, with broking is if things don't fit a certain criteria of one lender, there might be an appetite elsewhere with another lender. That uh, and I've done the modelling on that, and that could be sometimes that could be seventy five, eighty thousand difference on you know two people on eighty five thousand dollars a year on income. So, so it's really just looking at the individual circumstances and making sure the client's best positioned for their circumstances when we go and research the various lenders. So, 